Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name is Mark Taylor. Today we're going to be mounting these wings on an owl. So this is the this is the part that everybody gets afraid of. It's joinery, and it's a compound angle in the joinery. So uh, let's give it a try. So to cut these lines, what I did is I just laid the body of the owl over top of the wings. And I noticed what angle forward I wanted these wings to be at. Now I didn't show me cutting these on the bandsaw because um, I basically held the wing at a 45 degree angle and pushed it through the bandsaw. Not the safest practice. Um, I guess this could be done with also a sanding Fordham, like Fordham drum. Um, I just don't want any newer carvers getting hurt trying this. Uh, you really have to be careful, be safe. These are dowel tenon centering pins. They've been hanging in my garage unopened for probably 10 years. I'll show you how these are gonna work. I'm gonna use these to help line up the holes. And we'll try to put a dowel in to hold these wings together. Okay, out to the garage. Here I have a half inch ruby ball. Now because of the size and weight of this ball, you really need to chuck it all the way up close to the uh, collar and run it at the lowest speed. Uh, these, these, because of the weight, uh, you don't want to use real high speed. Uh, these things could, uh, at too, too high of a speed, if it has the tiniest little crack, could fly apart and really hurt you. So what I'm doing is hollowing out to fit the roundness of the body. So I'm, I'm cupping the inside of that wing, of the wood, so it will kind of wrap around the body and I'll be able to get a tighter fit on that wing. To keep the, uh, the gaps there as little as possible. Now tracing around the wing, and I'm going to flatten out all the raised spots, all those little feather details. It is kind of painful to, after you've taken the time to carve those feathers in to remove them and flatten them out, but part of the process. So we'll flatten those out and uh, make this area smooth. So the process really is multiple steps. You get it as close as you can, you fit it, you try to make note of where it needs to be tighter or closer. If a particular area is sticking out, you go back in with the sander and remove a little bit more. And you wanna, these are baby steps, a little at a time. Here you can really see where I cupped this out so it will fit against the owl's body closer. I put a little graphite on the inside of this wing and rubbed it up against the body and it left a mark. How convenient. Now I can see right where the high points are. 
on the owl. And of course, I know the high spot's going to be right in the center of this wing. And by the way, I do have a keyless chuck on the on the Dremel here. It's hand tightened. Uh, they only cost ten dollars. If you have a Dremel, you need to get it. It'll save you so much time. Well worth the ten dollars. All right, so we just continue and do like we did on the last wing. Flatten this out, test fit it. You just take your time, do it over and over again, right when you think you finished. Test fit it again and go, okay, I can do better. Take off a little bit more. Uh, just takes patience, keep at it. All right, so here we go, joining the wings to the body. Now what I tried to do is use these little dowel tools. Got a little spike on them. And for this particular size, quarter inch. So it's, you drill it in. Let me do this one here. Drill it in, slide it right in the hole, and then you would push it against exactly where you want it. So if I wanted it right there, I would push it in, it would leave an indent, and that would drill a hole in the center of that indent. Now a dowel will go in there and hold that together. I, there's a lot of compound angles going on here. So this is a complex piece and it's not quite where I wanted it. It, it. The wings are a little forward, but I want it closer to the body. So what I'm doing instead of using a dowel, which is rigid, is I'm using armature wire. Now armature wire, it comes like this and it's like an aluminum uh, it is an aluminum wire very bendable but if you twist it it becomes much more rigid so that's what I did I gave it a twist and I'm gonna stick that in in here there we go so now I got two pieces of armature wire sticking out there and I can still bend it and, I, and by bending it forward, I can get it closer to the body like that. So what I'll do is I'll epoxy these in place and the epoxy will give me a little bit of setup and dry time. This is about how I want the wings about like that. But being versatile you know if something doesn't work try something else and armature wire is is a wonderful wire to have especially if you're using a clay or, or two-part epoxy and it needs a little bit of body or uh, or support armature wire good stuff All right, so I have a little bit of uh, Magic Sculpt here. It's a two-part epoxy. It's already mixed up really well. Here I just have a 10-gauge wire. 
but I stripped and flattened out and I use that as a sculpting tool to get that epoxy down in there and it seems like it's holding pretty good like this so I will do the uh, other side I'm still able to move the wing backwards forwards up and down uh, with this armature wire in it not a whole lot but it, it makes it movable and uh, enough to forgive uh, little mistakes I've made along the way nice I'm liking it So right here I attempted to demonstrate that uh, you don't have to have water to make this magic sculpt uh, work, to make it um, pliable or smooth. So you can work with it without water. Do yourself a favor. Have some water nearby. After working with it for a little while, uh, it became... Uh, a kind of crumbly and I was having breaks in the clay just by dipping the tip of your sculpting tool in the water one it sticks better to wood if it's just a little bit on the wet side and it won't stick to your tool as much if the tool is wet it won't stick to the tool at all if it's wet uh, so, yeah, you want to do yourself a favor and it uh, doesn't take a whole lot. Just constantly dab your tool into uh, a little, little thing of water and uh, it goes, it'll go on much smoother and uh, you'll have less of a hassle. But it is possible without water, as you can see. I'm making it work. All right, so what I've done here is I have a couple of dowels with some screws and a little JB weld. Cut off the, uh, the heads of the screws and insert it in there with the epoxy. And these are now paint sticks. So if you hear people refer to paint sticks, this is what they're talking about, just some way of holding whatever you're painting without getting your greasy fingerprints all over it. Once this is sealed, you won't want to put your hands on it. So the way I'm going to mount this is I'm simply going to drill a hole here and put this on the back and it's going to hang on the wall. This is going to be a wall hanging. And I'll have a very unique uh, stand or, or way to present something later. It's going to be a surprise. Uh, but there will be another element to it that I guess we could call habitat. Uh, but it's 
nothing that I've ever seen before so this is gonna be completely new to me and uh, like I say I've never seen it before so it should be interesting so what I'll do is drill a hole here screw this in once I seal it this is how I'm gonna be holding on to it Okay, here's the hole, and we will just screw this in. Later on, I'll show you a trick on how to fill that hole when we go to put the, uh, the mounting screw in to mount it on the wall. But this will give you a nice handle to hold it while you're painting. You have to be careful with these in the process. And we will be sealing and painting this next time. Please like, share, subscribe. I'll see you next time.